This video is sponsored by Altium. Hi everyone. Welcome to the course of Introduction to Generative Adversarial Networks. In this course, we will cover the introduction of GANs, history of GANs, then we will see how GANs started and why GANs, the components of the GANs and how GANs work. And finally, we will have a look at GANs loss function. This video is sponsored by Altium, the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility, ease of use, and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task, with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. Generative adversarial networks are algorithmic architectures that use two neural networks pitting one against the other, thus adversarial in order to generate new synthetic instances of the data, data that can pass for real data. They are widely used in image generation, video generation, and voice generation. GANs were introduced in paper by Ian Goodfellow and other researchers at the University of Montreal, including Yusha Benjo in 2014. Referring to GANs, Facebook's AI research director, Yan Li Khan, called adversarial training the most interesting idea in the last 10 years in machine learning. GANs' potential for both good and evil is huge because they can learn to mimic any distribution of the data, that is, GANs can be taught to create words similar to our own in any domain. For example, images, music, speech, and prose. They are robot artists in a sense and their output is impressive. But they can also be used to generate fake media content and all the technology underpinning deep fakes. Generative adversarial networks, also called as GANs, are an exciting recent innovation in machine learning. GANs are generative models. They create new data instances that resembles your training data. For example, GANs can create images that look like photographs of human faces even though the faces don't belong to any real person. As shown in the figure one, these images were created by a GAN. Let us first take a look at what generative models are and how they differ from the discriminative models. Say you have input data X and corresponding output labels Y. A discriminative model tries to directly learn the conditional probability distribution P of Y X. That means P of the probability of Y given X. On the other hand, a generative model tries to learn the joint probability distribution P of X, Y. So this can be transformed into P of Y given X using base rule. However, additionally, as opposed to discriminative models, generative models can use the joint distribution P of X, Y to generate likely X, Y samples. So why should one want to study generative models? One might wonder what the big deal is in simply generating more data, especially since there is such an abundance of the data already available. But in reality, this could be put to several uses. Generative models are particularly useful when a majority of the labels are missing because of their ability to perform semi-supervised learning. 